guys, it's Danielle. I'm sorry, I'm whispering because I'm in this closet. I'm jumping around. So forgive me if I'm a little echoey. I may add something to take that away. So I had been experiencing some like crafter's block. Um, mostly there's a lot of things to create and I don't know, I just, I just gotten back from vacation. Uh, I was in Florida for a week and Really, what it came down to is I am procrastinating the Lunar story because I'm not confident in my photography skills, and I have this like these grandiose plans, and it's it's not exactly the way it's going to go down. And so I need to just accept that, that that my first pictures might be a little shitty, but the last will be better. Um, so I'm here with Mercy. She's doll of the month. Since I have a dozen dolls, I decided to dedicate a month to each one, and I'm already probably going to be failing, because after Christmas and the vacation, we are strapped, so Mercy's not really getting anything. But what inspired that is that um, this dress was made um, by a friend of mine, Safia, and she has a new Etsy shop for Raccoon Doll Girls, um, but as soon as this one arrived, something about... Sabine, like, the more clothes she wears, like, the frumpier she looks, and I guess it's because she's hippie and busty, if you don't accentuate the curves, she just looks kind of beefy. I hear footsteps upstairs. Everybody's sick, so I'm like, on oh, mom alert. Who's coughing? Who needs me? Um, anyway, so Mercy took one look at that dress, and she's like, mm, that's mine, and she put it on as not taking it off since. I mean, Look at how it accentuates her little pooch. I just love this dress so much on her. So I think I might hike it up a couple of inches. And if you saw, I mentioned on Instagram, I'm thinking like um, some, she's just wearing these sneakers, but some like black motorcycle boots and like a, maybe like a leather harness, maybe a sleeveless denim jacket or something. I'm not sure. Gotta kind of rock her out. And I've also been thinking about some piercings for both of the girls, but um, I was just playing around with some jump rings that came from a Christmas present of theirs, like a making jewelry thing. And so that didn't exactly work out because they're a little big, but we'll go back to that. So that's supposed to be on the agenda this month for Mercy. Um, and she also needs a new face up. So I'm um, shopping around. I've been very satisfied with um, my friend Michael with Fever and with Raisha, Anxi Fanglin, um, Red Iris Atelier. Um, but I, I want to spread the love around the, um, the doll community. So I didn't want to go back to them, but you know, it's better than what I would do. <laughs> I just don't feel like, I, I don't know the other people. Like, I know Michael from various groups on Facebook. I know, you know, Raisha from her videos and from her pff, reputation of freaking flawless face-ups. Um, and I actually talked to the person who did this, and she doesn't really have the capacity to do it right now. She's, like, in between moving and stuff. So I don't know if she's going to wait or... We'll just film her as she is. She's also supposed to get a new wig or improve the gluey bits that are up here. This was, I think, my first or second wig, so I didn't have the glue hiding skills that I've developed. Um, anyway, but I'm too lazy to make her a new wig. I really like it. If I could just, maybe I'll just add some, some more locks to cover up the glue. Anyway, what am I talking about? Yeah, so I had crafter's block for a long time, and, and for a long time, I mean like a few weeks. Um, but I, I like to always be creating, so it was kind of stressing me out that I wasn't creating anything. Because once you stop creating stuff, you can just go a year before you know it, and you produce nothing. So, the only cure for any kind of block, writer's block, crafter's block, whatever, is to just do it. Just get in there and just do it, and grab some supplies and start gluing crap together. So while I was on this road trip, I kept seeing a lot of billboards, of course, and some were like falling apart and rotten. I'm like, yeah. So um, I started the framework for a billboard. That's the only thing about this little closet. It's very small. Yeah, I jack these up trying to drill holes in them. So um, that's going to need a little work. So 
um, getting in and doing it. Let me go there before I talk about the other things. Um, right, so like 3 o'clock yesterday, which was Sunday, and I don't like to do take on big projects at 3 o'clock because I'm going to have to cook dinner, and then it's dinner time, and then it's bath time, and then it's bedtime before you know it. So for some reason at 3 o'clock, I'm like, let's rearrange the whole doll room. Why not? Because you can always craft in a space that's clean, right? And I don't so much clean as I rearrange constantly and put things away that way. Um, it's not a, it's not a very good, it's not, it's not, I would not, I would not recommend it. Um, anyway, so I was looking at Dash and Annie, Aniata's, um, Dash and Aniata, not Dash and Aniata. Anyway, I was looking at their space and I was like, this is a big closet. Um, it's not like a walk-in closet, but for a regular standard closet, it's big. It's really deep, like, um, a little shorter than my arm span, um, in length and the width is like arm and half. Um, and I'm like, I could totally fit a desk in there and the floor is tile. So if I drop paint, no big deal. So I decided this is going to be my crafting closet. So I pulled them out and I'll show you that arrangement in just a moment. Um, but first let's talk about some other things. So crafting, what else did I work on? I thought I brought more stuff in here, but I guess I didn't. Um, I'll talk about the book in a minute. So, I saw this beautiful painting that Swan Sarah Pint Size Palace was working on, or she had worked on, on Instagram, and I absolutely had to have it. It is so gorgeous, I cannot even express. And you can easily charge twice as much, Swans. I mean, look at how beautiful. Like, I don't know if you can even see, like, the depth in here. All the, like, sea plants and whatnot. It is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at the sun rays. It's ridiculous. So beautiful. I'm really, 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 really happy with it. And I feel like I need to own more of her art. Um, this is not going to live in the doll room because my husband and I have been working on increasing our collection of art. So she's going to be in the living room, which is our like gallery and stuff. His sister is always getting us a new art piece and there's... Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Anyway, so she just got us like a this Patty Smith um, album cover painting thing. Anyway, um, so in that package, I'll send you some other goodies. Do you see this? Do you see this? Some more original work, and then pictures of of the boys. Of the boys. I think that you guys we should make it a habit every time we sell or trade send a picture of your doll to the person you're trading with because I would really love to have all my friends' dolls all over the walls of this white space in here. Um, so I was really happy and I feel really inspired. I may actually move them here so I can watch, look at them while I'm crafting and get inspired. I need to print some pictures of my own dolls and get them up there. But since we're all printing things for our journals and stuff, you might as well print some extras for your friends. Um, what's next? So ever since Anne Picaro did that video with her mom, I've been kind of obsessed with junk journals and junk journals. And this is how everything works out in my life. One thing leads me to another. Junk journals led me to like art journals and like mixed media stuff. So I've been following this one chick. Mari, Ma, Ma, Ma. Whatever, I'll link her below. Um, she has these amazing videos, and they're like an hour long, of her actually sitting and doing this freaking thing. And one that attracted me immediately, because I'm a total cheapskate, is how to get pages that look like hers without using art supplies. Um, and she always starts with gesso, and I don't have any gesso. So I made, there's like a homemade recipe with like glue and water and cornstarch and baking soda. Um, not a fan, it was really thin. Um, and I ran out of cornstarch, so when I get more cornstarch in, I might add some. When I first used it, it just, like the baking soda left that, you know, that baking soda film. But I added more glue and really stirred up that cornstarch and settled at the bottom, and it was a little better. But instead, I used, crap, it's not here, um, lightweight spackle, um, and I just 
mix that with a little white acrylic paint and I'm going to 10 minutes and I haven't like said anything. Jeez. So I was really scared to work, you know, the, the book, the, the black moon book where I'll be putting the photo stories and mixing it with like a scrapbooking element since, um, I can't really write with my hand anymore. I just, it just, it hurts so much. Even writing a sentence is painful. So I can't journal like I used to, but I was thinking of like art journaling, like, uh, I watched another one and, and it, she just had like, let's say it was her calendar or whatever. And she just put things like the receipt from the fancy farmer's market that she'd never gone to before. Or for me, for my trip to Florida, I might add some of those, some shells and sand that we got. And I might add some, like a little piece of the cough syrup packaging because everybody was sick except for me. Um, so anyway, I was really nervous about working on this book because I don't want to mess up a page. I don't want to ruin everything. This is really making me so mad. Um, it's like alfalfa. Do you guys know who alfalfa is? Anyway, um, yeah, so I was really nervous. And if you have ever seen any of my journals, which hardly anyone ever has, I never write on the first page because it's just like, what if I mess it up and the, the journal's ruined? Um, but I just took the plunge and I started working on page one. Um, and so far now, mind you, when you get to this stage in a freaking art journal, everyone's looks like crap. So don't judge me too harshly. So this is the first page of the black moon book. And I probably wasted some things. Like I've got some, um, maps of London in here that you can see if you get pretty close. I can't even see what you're seeing. They're up there. Um, that maybe shouldn't have been covered up, but they, they need to. They're there to help build the layers and stuff. Um, and then this is part of a straw hat. And I figured let's make a moon shape. And this would be like my title page. So you might have seen me post it on Instagram today, but I want to use a lot of, um, you know, like oil spill colors, like the greens and purples. Um, I want to use some of that and some patina and rust. And I happened to watch another mixed media journal video because... Um, that lady that I mentioned before, Mari, she had like a 10 minute challenge. Like, what could you do in 10 minutes? And so someone did it and she'd ended up using like some nice teal and then went in with some rust in the corners. And that's exactly what I'd like to do. And the fun thing about this is that I can, because the gesso or spackle in this case is on it, I can do some of the things I would normally do with, with, um, like a you know, like a plastic piece or a diorama thing that I'm aging, which is just to cover it with watered down paint and wipe it down. Um, and I can do something like that with this. So I'm excited about working on that. Um, is that it? Oh yeah. So you guys know, I don't really wear a whole lot of make makeup. Um, and I never have. I've basically always just been a foundation, liquid liner, eyebrow game kind of girl and mascara, of course. Um, but for some reason I'm kind of known as the makeup person in my family. And I'm like, how did this happen? Um, so my niece, apparently I've influenced her. She's, um, just graduated college. Um, so when she moved out of the house to go to college, she gave me a bunch of her makeup. So, um, I'm going to be using some of that green and this rusty stuff. Ooh, and here's a nice sparkly rust. This is what that Mari um, woman used. That Mari woman. That's so terrible. Um, yeah, she used some of this stuff. So I'm going to try whatever I can. Ooh. Uh, um, because I'm never going to wear these. Not ever. Not ever. The only eyeshadow I ever wear is white with the liquid liner and a nice red lip. That's about as far as it goes. But I think some of these will come in handy. And I'm very excited to work on that. And the good thing about these is that if you mess up, just add more crap on top of them. Just keep adding and adding and adding more crap. I'm already at 15 minutes and I don't feel like this has been a productive discussion. Um, okay, one more thing and then I'll go. That was the zipper, by the way. I was not farting. So, um, I was thinking about my next doll and as much as I would love to order a Zuri, if I even had a chance to, a married all around, um, I hear coughing. I'm going to have to go. 
um, I'm really, I really need to think about what's important to me. And I've been obsessed with my character, Kitten De Palma. I just cannot stop thinking about her. And I dug out the old novel and the old, the old, old novel, because she was a jewelry thief, a jewel thief later, but earlier she was a private detective. Um, and so I was really torn, like, who's she going to be? What doll could, could possibly be her? Is she going to be an SD? Is she going to be an MSD? And the thing about Kitten is she was a big inspiration for my cartoon girls. Did I bring those in here? It's like, this is not a good storage area. I'm going to have to work on that. Um, so Kitten De Palma, yada, 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 reading the books. Yeah, she, so I was thinking about getting her as an SD because all oh, the pretty clothes she'll wear because her style is like very 50s greaser pinup type. Um, so all oh, the clothes I could get her because so much is available for SDs. Um, and so I thought about it and, you know, she would just be a pinup girl and I would just take pictures of her and get her nice clothes. But I look at like Aniata and Dash Kabani and it's like they... I love them. They're not going anywhere, but they don't do anything. They don't do anything. They just take up a bunch of space and they sit there and they're beautiful, which is great. But I don't need another doll like that who's going to take up so much space and I'll need to make her a freaking whole diorama and set her up with scenes. And if she's going to be a private detective, she's going to need cases. So, um, oh, and then there's this, um, I think our generation sort of like roadster car. Um, and the kitten has this car, um, named, uh, Trixie and Trixie is almost like another character in the book. So I'm going to have to get her a Trixie. Um, and I'm not going to find an SD size car that I can even begin to afford. She drives a Ford Galaxy, a 1964 Ford Galaxy, but I'm never going to find anything that looks like that. So like any kind of retro car will probably be fine because kittens is sort of bizarrely retro. Like she said, 1940s style detective, um, driving a 1960s car, dressing like it's the 1950s, but living in the modern world, um, which makes her, it's going to be so easy to dress her because she's going to be modern. So I decided let's go for MSD size. That way I can make her an office. I can, she can have a car. And if I need to work on cases, then I'll actually have clients and stuff, some extras, some people to play characters in her stories. Um, and I've been really super excited about it. I'm so glad I settled on MSD. I keep daydreaming about Anna Dolls Milton and Adley, and maybe there'll be a crossover one day and they can work on the same case or they can consult each other. I already have the outfit planned out. So Kitten will be wearing like a maroon um, turtleneck with um, a, like a very modest below the knee like plaid skirt uh, with a little beret. Very like Faye Dunaway in... Um, the thing, Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, I'm just so, I know Kitten's style so well, I just cannot wait. So, she is going to be a raccoon doll, Nina at the beach. Um, and I'm not, you know, I came from the Barbie world. It's so hard for me to look at a blank doll and be like, oh, this doll totally looks like my character. Actually, Kitten's the only character I've ever tried to shell, so. Anyway, what I'm saying is, um, it's hard for me to see the raw potential. Um, and that's where I think doing my own face-ups at some point would probably be a good idea so that I can get to know the potential of a face, of a sculpt. Um, anyway, so Nina at the beach, she's got the amazing eye job, she's got the bread lips, and I mean, you know, the raccoon dolls are just curvy as all get out. So it was between raccoon doll and um, Eiffel House if I was gonna do the SD. And then she would have been maybe Estella? Because I've seen, are you familiar with Devolve Darling? Devolve Darling? Um, they've got a doll named Zeta. And Zeta, if you look at Zeta, Zeta is Kitten De Palma. When I saw her, I was like, oh my god, I need a kitten doll. This is Kitten, oh my god! So I don't want to get an Eiffel House Karina because I'll just be totally ripping it off. Anyway, I'm very excited about Kitten. And I'm even more excited than I was about Zuri because I'd have to give Zuri her own, her own story. And I'm already busy working on this. But Kitten can be an extra in this. I can easily dress her up as something else. Anyway, I'm super excited about that. That's where I am. We're at 20 minutes. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. So, um, hold on. I'm going to give you a tour, okay? Okay. So now I'm in the closet looking out into the room. And I've moved Nasiri's tree here. 
and see that was over there in the corner. Um, so just for some extra space, um, this is where coriander, oh, I've ordered some doll's own hands, or I thought I did, but I can't find any kind of receipt or any kind of charge, so did I not hit submit or something? Right now, this is where, uh, little girl Lexi, where her room is, um, but it's not a permanent room or anything. Oh, uh, we'll talk more about that. So, um, also Tilly's camels are living here for the time being. And I've got Dash and Aniata chilling out. And I love this because I love looking at them. I love their world and I love their whole atmosphere. And I love that it's a part of this room now. And the, another good part is that Miss Yuri gets to be with her family and have her own space in her much neglected tree and that tree actually gets some use and so down here we'll have like some storage i'm i could even build more dioramas down there if i want um and this is Gigi's tree i put it on a sturdier desk um because this is like an antique and i was crafting on it and it's like why are you gonna why just be a display desk okay so here is the post-apocalyptic world more will be added i move the river over to the end because i don't really use it some more of the crafting space and then giant bag of fabric that I need to organize. And then here is when where I'll be setting up um, the photo story shoots for the girls. And then that is the same as usual and this is just more storage. So that is it my friends. Um, I don't know, nice to talk to you all again and I will talk to you soon.